We're talking all things insurance today and Christopher Cook with Alliance Insurance Services is answering your questions. This person says, if I live in a condo building, should I insure just my possessions or do I also need to insure the cost of the condo that I bought? Um, sort of both. You, you need what's called an HO6, uh, which is a specific condo owner's form. And it will cover the portion of the building that you are responsible for repairing in the event of the claim. So typically you're gonna cover the interior of that building your condo association is going to cover the exterior walls and the roof, and you will always be responsible for your own possessions. So make sure you, you talk to your agent about having an HO6 condo owner's form. HO6, right. This person says, does liability coverage on my car cover a rock hitting my windshield and the cost of replacing that windshield? Liability insurance pays for claims that you are liable for, claims that you're responsible for. So that's to other parties. Uh, comprehensive is the coverage item that you would want to have on your automobile policy for a uh, crack to a windshield. All right, and comprehensive is not a coverage that we have to have. That's right. We have to have liability in our state to protect others from our mistakes. Uh, comprehensive is an optional coverage. Um, that you would have to purchase. Okay, and that is the rock hitting the windshield. That is the tree limb falling on your car. Hail damage, flood, fire, hitting an animal are the most common. Okay, gotcha. All right, so you need to check and make sure that you have comprehensive. Otherwise, you're just going to pay for that out of pocket. Um, this person says, how much does renter's insurance cost on average? $15 is a high estimate. More often than not, you can get a policy for $10 a month, uh, which is you know, around 120 to 150 dollars a year. And you know, we have this conversation almost every single time there is a fire like at an apartment building or something and people say, I can't believe that the apartment complex is not going to pay for my stuff. And that's because that's what renters insurance is for. They're not responsible. Yeah, they're not responsible for your stuff. And, and you know, unfortunately, they can't insure something they don't own. They can't insure your stuff. Uh, so you're responsible for taking care of your own items. Well, that's a really, I've never heard anybody put it that way, that they can't insure something that they don't own. You own your stuff. That's why you have to have the insurance. Okay. This person says, can a homeowner's insurance company deny coverage due to having oil, heat, and an underground tank? And if so, why? Yeah, sure. So the homeowner's insurance company gets to make what we call an underwriting decision. They get to choose the policies that they do and don't issue and they have underwriting requirements. Many homeowners insurance companies have went away from writing homeowners policies for properties that have oil heat due to, believe it or not, the pollution exposure. If that oil tank le leaks, pardon me, and creates a liability for the cleanup of that, uh, they've just simply paid out too many claims. It's, it's a math equation and uh, oil tanks have high claims amounts and high claims frequency and, and insurance carriers have chosen not to write those properties any longer. Mm -hmm. And that is their business and they have to assess the risk that way. Okay. When is a good time to change a $1,000 deductible to a $500 deductible? Um, anytime before a claim. Um, <laughs> and, and if you know a claim is coming, that's what we call insurance fraud. Um, we, we, you and I suggest insurance reviews every year, and we do it a lot together. And so sit down and, and review your policy with your insurance agent or your insurance carrier. Understand what the premium difference will be. And, and please know that if you know a claim is coming and you lower your deductible, many would call that fraud. Mm, be careful with that. All right, this person says, my home insurance company is using my roof's age along with the roof type to determine my policy renewal premium. Is this a new procedure? No, that's common in the industry, um, and that's that's common in all insurance. As a customer, you are transferring the risk to the insurance company. The insurance company is deciding what that risk costs. So older roofs have more claims. They have more risk, if you will. If there's more risk, there's more premium. Um, and, and every insurance company in our state does that. Uh, they're just assessing your property and uh, based on the roof's age, and yes, your premium will be higher if you have an older roof. Mm -hmm. Okay. This person says, silly question, but is it true that it costs more to insure a red car? 
I agree with you. It is a silly question. <laughs> uh, but we've that's heard been that, said. Right? All of us have heard. Yeah, that. we we hear it all the time. We hear it every year. Uh, the color of the car does not uh, dictate um, your insurance premium. What does is your driving record, and it has been proven that red cars seem to catch the eye of police officers from time to time. And you may have a few more speeding tickets. People with more speeding tickets pay more insurance premium. Mm -hmm. This person's asking, what kind of insurance do I need if I'm an Uber driver? And I bet there's a lot of Uber, DoorDash, and all that around. Yeah, Uber, DoorDash, Airbnb. Um, I can't remember the name of the folks that rent RVs. All those things are new to the industry, new to the economy, and, and the insurance industry is catching up to them. Please be careful specifically if you're an Uber driver. Almost every policy, automobile policy in North Carolina, excludes coverage while you are working for uber so while your app is on and you need to understand that you can secure coverage it's a very not very but it's a complicated topic we don't probably have time to cover tonight but you need to tell your insurance agent you're driving for uber and you need to make sure he or she helps you secure the proper coverage so that when you're driving um you are covered when you're when you actually have a customer in your car uber covers you the problem is when you're in between passengers Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Interesting. This person said, I've heard my insurance agent talk about riders on a policy. What are those and what do they cover? <laughs> we all use different names, endorsements, bells and whistles in layman's terms, riders. Uh, they are enhancements to your policy that offer the coverages that your agent would suggest. So you're saying like, I have an extra rider on jewelry because I have more jewelry than what they actually cover on a standard policy. That's a great example. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We're back with one more segment coming up.